Welcome, in front of me is a OnePlus 12 and today I will show you a couple of tweaks and the tricks you can do on this phone. So let's get started by opening up our settings and I'm going to begin with the relatively simple ones like dark mode which is located under the display and the brightness and we have the permanent switch from light to dark which if I remember correctly is also visible throughout the setup process but what isn't is the option below which is the schedule mode. This will make it so the device will switch between these two modes automatically either on between the sunset to sunrise or on a custom timer of your choice which would give you best of both worlds. Now scrolling a little bit lower we have the screen color mode this is basically the saturation of uh, the display if you find the display to be a little bit too saturated because by default i think here i don't know it's actually not that bad uh, but you can obviously go through this uh, we do have apparently a pro mode which uses a d65 color temperature um not actually sure if this is like some color accurate option like the srgb or some other ones but uh in any case we have a couple options you have vivid which is obviously the typical kind of like uh overdone samsung kind of uh color mode um samsung as in like you know they have always vivid mode enabled as a brand and it's always just egregiously too saturated uh natural here actually seems to be pretty decent but you have other choices if you want to fiddle around with it and additionally you have the color wheel right here so you can add specific color hue to uh, the actual display going back we also have the natural tone display basically a true tone for uh, oneplus I'm ripped up from like iphones uh, it does make the display a little bit more yellowish so be mindful of that uh, it does look better with just higher brightness and anyway, i'm gonna turn it off for now Scrolling a little bit further down, we have additional things like the image sharpener and video color boost. So two things that will basically try to improve the image quality of uh, content that you're going to be viewing on here. Uh, this just tries to upscale images uh, and on the video it's not very visible. Uh, but if you're looking at this uh, on the phone yourself, uh, you can see the kind of a difference between like when it's crossing, the line is crossing where the B is. So on the left side is a little bit more pixelated compared to the right side so it just tries to make things look sharper and higher resolution than they actually are now this feature uh, the image sharpener along with the color boost does consume a little bit more of your phone's battery so if you want to have the best battery life you might not want to enable it because it is using your phone's processor to achieve these results it will obviously need to use more resources therefore use more battery and here's just the video color boost uh, what it does is as you can see uh, increases the uh, exposure on the on the actual image right here making it look a bit more bright and uh, i think the saturation might be a little bit higher but not by much but in any case, you can obviously fiddle around with it, see if you like the results. Now, scrolling a little bit further down, we have a screen refresh rate. And here we have a couple of different options. We have the auto select, which will be actually the best option for majority of the people. But for the people that want to maybe read a lot of books on their device, I would probably recommend sticking with the standard, which will give you 60 hertz refresh rate and might be a bit better when reading in terms of battery life uh, but like i said for everyone else i recommend the auto select because this is an ltpo display it does crank up all the way to 120 hertz refresh rate when it's needed uh, and content that isn't able to be displayed at 120 hertz maybe for instance this could be probably playing at 60 if i'm correct so right now it would be displaying at 60 and anywhere else where there isn't anything moving like right over here uh, the display could drop all the way down to i believe one hertz or 10 basically frames per second so it would then give you a better battery life now this only applies to content that isn't moving uh, if you're reading books and you're flipping through pages obviously that would pages moving would not make that be running at one hertz it would be running at 120 at that point so not the best kind of result but so, like I said, for everyone, the 
outer would be the best one just because it utilizes the highest refresh rate along with the lowest one depending on what you need at the moment now scrolling a little bit actually no, we're done in display so let's go back to the main setting page and here we're gonna navigate to home screen and lock screen where we have a couple additional things uh we have things like the uh the uh what was it screen mode home screen mode by default it's set to drawer mode i thought that it might actually be set to standard but i could be incorrect but in any case you can choose between these two it just uh, defines if your all your applications are smack in the middle of your home screen or in an app drawer we also have home screen layout which allows you to pack more applications visible at the same time on a single page by just condensing them a little bit more you can see uh, below that we have pull down gesture this allows you to activate semi one-handed gesture mode in a way but uh, you can see how it works right over here though i will be honest this doesn't always work as smoothly as it's shown obviously on the animation so you might need to fiddle around with it a little bit before you get the hang of it now moving a bit further down we have the swipe down at home screen this is a pretty nice option i personally like to select it to be at the, the notification drawer so when you swipe down before i actually change it you swipe down right now it gives you the shelf i don't really like that uh, let's see let's go back here we have also global search and a notification drawer which is what i would prefer so when you swipe down you get your notifications that removes the need for you to go from the top swipe down to actually get this panel visible which is pretty handy next we have animation speed in here this just uh, allows you to choose the animation uh, speed of different things so for instance uh, this kind of window when it pops up it is animated so it just kind of fades into view we can increase that speed so it is a bit faster not by much and also things like the swipe or going back so the motion of it swiping is also increased though this isn't necessarily gonna change all that much in terms of speed if you want to get better results i recommend navigating the developer options and going down in there to animation transitions and uh, animation speeds and change them from 0.1 to 0.5 this will give you a significantly faster animation speed so i'm not really gonna go show that just because it's a little bit too long now moving on uh to notifications and status bar here we have another thing that i personally like which is the status bar section and all the toggles visible here this allows you to just hide them from your status bar so they don't show up even though they for instance are enabled now right now we have things like uh, Wi-Fi enabled, a location, a rotation, NFC. So NFC is already toggled off. That's not really the default kind of appearance for most devices. I'm not sure if this is default toggled off. I don't think so, but it could be. Uh, but in any case, you can basically go over and literally hide every single toggle from being visible in the status bar battery style make it a little bit cleaner um battery percentage we can hide that unfortunately we can't hide the uh sim icon and wi-fi for some stupid reason we used to be able to do that apparently not anymore next we can also condense the notifications by default it's showing you each notification individually but for instance you can condense it to just a number so it will show you how many notifications you have it just won't show you what notifications they are or from what application but it obviously you can still pull down your notification tray and get that info here now last thing that i wanted to show is the gesture navigation which should have the option to actually enable it there we go by going into home screen and lock screen and we do have the redirect right here system navigation and we have the gesture navigation i'm not going to be learning it i already know how to use it so when you enable it it removes your buttons and swaps it for this bar which can swipe up to go home swipe up and a hold to go to recent and then swipe from either side to go back which you do have a pretty good animation right here displaying all these gestures in action another thing that you have access in here too is the height gesture guide bar which is this bar at the bottom for a cleaner look while still retaining the functionality of it so there we go this 
finishes up all the tweaks and tricks I want to show you, so if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.